here we're going to do some practice on identifying angles based on their definitions. So let's take a look at number one. We have, we're being asked to name an angle adjacent to the angles that are listed. Okay, so let's first identify what angle UAY is. So UAY, okay, is this angle right here. And you can see here that it uh, it's, indicates that it's 50 degrees and it's angle number four. So the question is, is what angle is adjacent to that angle? Well, we would have to remember that adjacent angles are angles that are next to each other. So they share a side and a vertex. So actually there are two angles that I could name. I can either say angle three, because this here is adjacent, because here's the side they share U, A, U. Or I could also say angle five, because they share the side A, Y. Okay, so either one of those would be correct. Okay, let me switch colors here. Now we're looking at, see if we can find the angle adjacent to X, A, Z. So X, A, Z. Okay, so that's angle number one. And again, there are two possible answers here. I can say angle five because it shares a side AZ, or I can say angle number two, because it shares a side AX. So both of those would be adjacent to angle XAZ or angle one. Last one is angle YAZ. So Y, A, Z, Y, A, Z. Okay, that's angle number five. So again, I also, there are two angles that are adjacent or next to or share a side to angle five, and that would be angle one, because it shares the side A, Z, or I could say angle four because it shares a side AU. Okay, so those are adjacent angles. Remember, adjacent just means next to. So they touch, okay? All right, so now let's take a look at question number two here. And I have this image here. Let me get this, there we go, okay. Switch back to my blue. All right, so now we're looking to name the angle that's vertical. Okay, now remember vertical V, okay? It's where the angles make the opposite V symbols. Okay, they share the vertex, but they're opposite to one another. So here we're looking for the angle vertical to number eight. Well, number eight is right here. So what would be the angle vertical to it or makes that opposite, opens in the opposite direction but shares that same vertex? Well, that would be angle number six. Okay, those angles are vertical. Okay, how about angle E? Let me change colors here so it's easier to see. So here I have angle E. So what angle Op opens in the opposite direction of angle E. Well, that would be angle one. Those are vertical angles. And we one, remember, one thing we want to remember in terms of what properties for vertical angles is that they are always congruent, okay? And remember, my symbol for congruent is the equal sign with a little squiggle on top. That means they are both, they both have the same value, okay? 
All right, next is complementary. Now we need to remember what complementary means. Okay, now complementary means that the angles add to 90 degrees. Okay, so we want the angle that's complementary to A, B, S. So A, B, S, okay. So it's right there. And if you notice, I have the right angle symbol right next to ABS. So the angle that I'm going to, that complements ABS and makes both angles add to 90 would be angle ABT. So ABT. So together, they add to 90 degrees. Okay. Now for supplementary, supplementary angles add, we need to remember that they add to 180 degrees. Okay, so if I look at WDB, so WD, WDB, okay, so that's this angle here. Or I could have also just um, said angle D as well. I need to know that what angle is going to finish off and give me that straight line or that 180 degrees. And that angle is going to be angle 6. Okay, so angle D or angle WDB plus angle 6 gives me 180 degrees. If we take a look at angle BEG, so BEG, okay, so here I have that's a 90 degree angle. The angle that I need to make to complete this straight angle here would be angle E, B, D. Because again, anytime we're looking for supplementary angles, we're looking for angles that complete that straight line. One more image and take a look at here. And this time we're going to look um, for angle measures. Okay. Now, I really should have put the M in front of these because remember it's the measure of angle QOP and the measure of I should have done that to begin with okay, so we're looking for the measure of angle QOP so let me highlight this in red so we can see so QOP so QOP okay so that's also angle number three and I need to know what, ang what the measure of that angle is. Well, if I take a look at angle number one, angle number one is 30 degrees. So when I compare angle one and angle three, those angles are vertical. So that means they are congruent. So that means the measure of angle QOP is also 30 degrees. Okay, now let's look at, we're looking at the measure of QOR. So QOR, okay. Also, I could also, or angle number four. Okay, now there's two ways you could look at this. Okay. First, we can look at the fact, and I'm going to draw it separately here. 
um, I have the 90 degree angle here. I have angle four here, and I know this is 30 degrees. Okay, and I know this is 90. So if you notice, all three of these angles form a straight line. So the total of all three angles is 180 degrees. I have two of the angles. I have the 90 degree angle and I know angle three is 30 degrees. So together, 90 plus 30 is 120. Well, the remaining angle number four must be the difference from between 180 and 120 because all three added together give me 180. So when I subtract 180 minus 120, I get 60 degrees. So that means angle four is 60 degrees. Now the other way you could look at this is the fact that we know that ROS is a 90 degree angle. So if this is, if ROS is 90 degrees, then that means ROP is also 90 degrees. Because again, 180 minus 90 is 90. So the other way, so if I knew that angle three plus angle four were also complementary, I could just do 90 minus 30, which is angle three, to get the measure of angle four, which is 60. So either way, um, we get 60 degrees. Okay, next is the measure of angle two. Okay, so the measure of angle two is right here. Now, for the same reason that I just mentioned, because ROS is 90 degrees, ROU is 180, so that means that this, angles one and angle two, must also be 90 degrees. So I can do, well, I've already done the math for 90 minus 30, which is 60, or I can look at it this way and say, oh, okay, well, angle four and angle two are vertical angles. So therefore, angle two must also be 60 degrees. Doesn't matter how you look at it. Either way is correct. And then our last angle is POU. So POU, okay. And because these lines are perpendicular, based on my right angle that was drawn originally um, and the fact that R, we have ROS and POU are also vertical so that means this also must be that angle must also be 90 degrees. Hope this was helpful.